Okay, welcome to part two of this revision screencast for GCSE Chemistry AQA Unit 2, Structure and Bonding. Yeah, previously I dealt with uh, ionic bonding and we're going to go on to look at covalent and metallic bonding in this section. So just to recap, to compare ionic and covalent bonding, ionic bonds, they're, they're strong bonds between a metal and a non-metal ion and the ion is formed by the complete transfer of electrons. And as the cartoon shows there, the one element gives away an electron to another element. Compare that with what happens in covalent bonding. Covalent bonds, well, they're strong too, just like ionic bonds. Don't get the impression they're weak. Um, they always involve non-metals, so two non-metal atoms joined together. Could be the same element or different elements. Um, they involve by comparison, the sharing of electrons rather than the complete transfer of electrons. OK, let's have a look uh, at how that works. Um, the simplest example would be perhaps to look at hydrogen. A hydrogen atom consists of one proton in the nucleus and a single orbiting electron. So here are two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom has got one electron. Just like in ionic bonding, the atoms become more stable if they have the electron configuration of noble gases, that is, full electron shells. So I'm going to show one of the hydrogen atoms with a, as its electron with a cross and one with a dot, not because they're different, just so that you can see what's going on. So when these two elements join together, notice they're a non-metal, what happens is they share an a pair of electrons. So those two electrons are orbiting both nuclei. They're orbiting around this left-hand hydrogen atom and this right-hand hydrogen atom. And so the covalent bond is this electrostatic force of attraction caused by the electrons orbiting both atoms. Let's have another, another example. Chlorine. See, chlorine is quite interesting because um, it can form ionic bonds, but it can also form covalent bonds too. So if you've got uh, a sample of chlorine gas, the element. In fact, what you've got are pairs of atoms joined together. And what happens is, you can see there's a gap here, and there's a gap here. Those two electrons are shared between the two atoms and orbit both atoms. And that's the, the covalent bond between these two atoms, Cl2, chlorine gas. Okay, so sharing of electrons. Uh, let's have a look at it. water. Water is an interesting one. H2O, so we've got two H's and an O. I'll show the oxygen atom as uh, crosses of the electrons. You can see water has two covalent bonds in. There's one between the hydrogen and the oxygen, sharing that pair of electrons. And look, here's the other this pair of electrons shared. Notice how the oxygen now effectively has eight electrons in its outer shell, so it's more stable, and the hydrogen has two electrons in its outer shell, so it's more stable as well. So H2O, that's water. Um, so you, you notice that uh, oxygen, chlorine, examples I've shown you, they can do covalent bonds or they can do ionic bonds, depending on the situation. Some atoms are not capable of doing uh, ionic bonds at all. Look at carbon. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. It can't really form ions because it would have to either gain four electrons or lose four electrons. That's just too many. It takes too much energy to remove those electrons. So carbon can only form covalent bonds and it does this by sharing electrons with hydrogen atom. So by sharing one of its electrons with a hydrogen atom, in return it gains a share of the hydrogen's electron. So you know, overall it can be said to have got an extra electron. So by forming bonds with four hydrogen atoms, making four covalent bonds, effectively it's filled up its outer shell. So it's gained the electron configuration of a noble gas, in this case We've got the same electron configuration as neon. So we've got four covalent bonds, four pairs of electrons shared with four hydrogen atoms. The formula for methane is CH4. So this is referred to as a dot-cross diagram. So to summarise, covalent bonds only form between non-metal elements. 
and a covalent bond is formed when two atoms share a pair of electrons. Each atom donates an electron. These electrons orbit the nuclei of both atoms and that's the basis of the bond. That's the strong force of electrostatic attraction between the two atoms. When we're representing covalent structures we can do it in a variety of ways. I showed you the bonding of methane with the formula CH4. We can draw a displayed formula like this with the covalent bond represented by a line or we can do a dot cross diagram. So there's the electrons of the carbon atom represented as crosses and then four hydrogen atoms each bringing in their electron represented by a dot. So overall we've got uh, both all the atoms have a complete set of electrons, that's a dot cross diagram, or we can draw it in this way showing the electron shells. Okay, so the third kind of bonding we need to know about is metallic bonding. Uh, in a metal where uh, it's an element you've got a lattice of atoms. That means a regular arrangement of atoms. And the outermost electrons of these atoms are able to move around. They can move freely within the piece of metal. We say that they are delocalized. So that effectively gives us uh, a, a sort of regular pattern laid out of positive metal ions and they're surrounded by what's sometimes referred to as a sea of electrons that can move about. And this so-called metallic bond is formed by the strong force of electrostatic attraction, the positive ions and the negative electrons. And of course it's the reason why metals are very good conductors, because these electrons can move around easily. If you apply an electric field, they'll move in one direction or another. But of course that's a topic of a different uh, study. So just to recap you need to be able to draw dot cross diagrams for either ionic or covalent bonds. Just look at these two diagrams. The top one shows sodium chloride, NaCl. This uh, is an ionic compound. You can tell that because it's a metal and a non-metal. And notice how there are brackets drawn around each ion to indicate that that positive or negative charge is held by the whole object. And you can see that the chlorine has one of the electrons shown as a dot to indicate that it's come from the sodium atom. Similarly, the covalent bond between the two chlorine atoms is shown by an overlapping orbital and the shared electrons are drawn within the overlapping area. So if you're asked to draw a dot cross diagram, you should draw it something like that. OK, thanks for listening. That covers Unit 2.1, Part 1, Structure and Bonding.